Hello and welcome to the Irish Arts of Gunner podcast. It's Tuesday the 14th of February, which can mean only one thing. It's Valentine's Day or Valentine's Night at this stage. So it's a romantic one too with myself and Craig Smith. How are you, Craig? Johnny, how are you keeping, pal? <laughs> uh, romantic special tonight between us two. <laughs> just like to say that this was not planned deliberately. <laughs> it's it, this is what happens when you're still a teenager with all them other films that are usually my guess. <laughs> I'm pretty disappointed you never cook me a meal, Johnny, or get me a bit of wine or something. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have plenty of wine tomorrow night if we be Man it. City. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Man City, we can three or four bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing, as Lionel Richie sang, d- dancing on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's um, it's myself and Craig tonight. Um, I, I talked to the other lads. Um, I talked to our men, but they're still um, young sweethearts uh, looking after their mistress. So it'd be myself and Craig tonight. Um, as always, you can catch our show on the Dublin Arsenal YouTube channel. And you can follow us on Instagram and Spotify. We're back on as well as of the last few weeks. You can catch our shows going back from uh, the 4th of January this year. Uh, so you can catch and uh, all our other previous episodes from last season. But that's where you can catch our shows from January. Um, as, as I said, you can catch us on the Instagram page as well. Uh, we're Mark will uh, be adding daily content as always anything else related so thanks to Martin for putting this show and editing this show week in week out without him it'd be fair to say there will be no podcast Um, also catch our sister show which is presented by Martin to cover the women's super league uh, beyond the last man Um, really I think there might be a show this week Um, Arsenal played there at the weekend so catch his show as well Um, yeah it was a bad weekend really on in wasn't it yeah yeah (laughs) It seems when the men have a bad weekend, the women seem to have a yeah. knock-on effect. I don't know what that yeah. is. Um, hopefully, they always bounce back strong. So, here, here's to the Arsenal women's team. Um, thanks to our sponsor, clubgolf.co.uk. Use Dub Arsenal 10 for a 10% discount at the checkout. And, as always, catch um, all the matches in the uh, official support at uh, the River Bar in Dublin City Centre. You can catch um, all Premier League Europa League games um till now and the till the end of May. Um and it's definitely worth a visit. Uh, I know myself and Craig, if you're ever around uh Blanchestown, uh the Kinsilla Inn is where a good spot for matches as well. It's a great yeah, yeah. yeah. They uh, they showed uh, most of the games and uh the Guinness are drinking there now is normally good up there, so <laughs> a good spot to get uh and watch the Arsenal. So that was a good crowd up there. Cheers to that. Um, of course, um, please visit um our sister um Arsenal fans as well. Uh, justarsenal.com. Our, our views have shot up the last two weeks. They've gone on. The previous week was over three thousand views. Last week's stats was um one thousand eight hundred fifty four views. Uh, six likes, and we're up to two thousand eight hundred forty. Uh, thousand subscribers now, which was that's up 540 since I think last week of the week we were at 2300 for a while and it's just jumped up. So, it um, please visit justarsenal.com where they put up uh post match interviews, um, along with all other Arsenal related to- gear as well. They're, they're trying to get up to a thousand subscribers themselves, so please give them a like because they've been a big help to us. Our, our average was about I think 100, 200 views a week. Now yeah, we're going yeah. to 2,000, so yeah. it's just incredible. Fair uh, thanks, lads. Fair thanks, yeah. Yeah, thanks to everyone at JustArsenal.com. You've really helped us a big time. We hope to help you as well. Um, on this week's show, um, we'll be previewing, or sorry, reviewing um, our one all draw against Brentford. Um, Leandro Trossard scored for ourselves, which looked like it came a bit after the arrow mark, the winner, but um, a controversial, again, via Jordan, we'd all agree. Ivan Tony got the equaliser, which should have been ruled out for offside from Norgard, so we'll be discussing that one. Um, and also previewing tomorrow night's big one, uh, part two of the trilogy against Manchester City. Um, you could nearly call this a six-pointer, because uh, at the moment, as it stands, we're on 51 points, City are on 48, and... 
if they did wait, beat us tomorrow night, they'd overtake us due to the goal difference, I think, psychologically as well. That would be a bit of a bl- yeah. hammer blow after being ahead for so long. I think we'll both agree. But we get into that after the um, review of uh, Brentford at the weekend. Um, sadly, um, family um, commitments kind of t- has t- 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 took that away from me from watching it. Um, football seems to be... Um, not that important um, at the moment, but um, I'll come to you, Craig. I, I only saw the highlights through the Arsenal lap. Um, what did you make of the match on Saturday? Yeah, I watched the whole game. Um, look, it was, it was always going to be a difficult game. You know, Brentford are a very good side. Um, Thomas Frank's a very good manager as well. So, you know, I was, I was anticipating a tough game, and uh, that's what it was. I thought we started brightly enough. Um, I think we kind of, you know, the last two or three games against Everton and City, we've started slow. So I think this game in particular, we tried to start as quickly as we could, like we did in the uh, first few games of the season. We tried to, uh, to kind of blow Brentford away. Um, we didn't get that kind of lucky break in the first ten minutes or so, and then I think Brighton kind of came into the game. Then um, they were doubling up on on uh, the winger Saka in particular. Um, the first 10 minutes or so, he kind of had the beating of Rico Henry, but then the midfielder, the winger was kind of coming back to give him a dig out. So, um, you know, Saka kind of had a quiet game then after that. Um, you know, look, Brentford are very similar to Everton and Newcastle in this league, you know. So um, they were always going to kind of come, sit back and try counter us. Um, the first half in particular, they, they hit the trio with the Basically, the kick kicked a good few long balls up towards Ivan Tony, and um, what a very good game. Um, and he's a player that I really like. I wouldn't mind him in Arsenal now, to be honest with you. He's a, just a different option. Um, you know, I've seen a few comments that he he bullied Saliba, but I don't really agree with that. Um, yeah, you know, the stats going around like he won a lot of headers and that, but you know, I don't think Saliba had a terrible game. He wasn't great, but I don't think he was terrible either. Um, Tony being from to a few headers, but you know, uh, apart from the, the controversial goal, Tony scored, and um, he had one, one other chance, he probably should have scored. I think he hit the, co- the corner of the bar. Um, you know, he didn't have many chances other than that. Um, first half, you know, we didn't really have many, many chances, really. Um, a couple of half chances, Martinelli hit a shot, um, over you know, over the, over the uh, volley over the crossbar. And then uh, Zinchenko had a few kind of long rangers um, from outside the box that didn't really trouble David Raya. Um, you know, second half then, um, we were better. We were the better team. Uh, we kind of upped the intensity. I think it had to get me, you know, a good talking to at half time. Um, again, look, I feel sorry for him in a way, but I think he did a very quiet game, Martinelli. You know, he's found it difficult the last few weeks. Um, I do feel sorry for him the way because Xhaka is, you know, he's coming into the centre of the park where Antonchenko then is coming to midfield. So Martinelli is kind of left outside to the left side on his own. So he's no real kind of fullback overlapping him. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, when he had Tierney there, sometimes, you know, he plays a bit better. Uh, whereas the other side, Saka has White coming up and down the wing. All the time, you know, Zinchenko is not really that overlapping the fullback. So I do feel sorry for Martinelli. I think his form will return. Yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into the City game later on. There's probably an, there could be an argument for Trossard to start. Yeah. But Martinelli, I don't know if it'll happen, happen or not. Um, look, we got the goal. Um, I, I, you know, it probably was as there because we were starting to put a bit of pressure on them at that. The, um, when we got the goals, good bit of work from Saka going past Rico Henry and then crossing it over. The trust hard and look, you know, it's not an easy finish. No, it's not, no. yeah. Do you know, like the, the ball came, came at him at a, at a good pace, and he, you know, he, he took it away. So fair play to trust hard. I think he's been very good since he's since he's come into the club. Um, probably unlucky to not start one or two more games, but uh, he's really just feeling his way into the club. So uh, I'm sure the starts will come for him. Um, look, the goal that Brentford score scored was very controversial. Um, whether it was even a free kick at all, I don't think it was. Ivan Tony wrapped his arms around 
Saliba and Saliba kind of couldn't go anywhere and the referee gave a free kick you know that's the first kind of the dubious decision then the free kick is taken and there's nearly I think there's two offsides in that in in in, in that play but Lee Mason and Barr doesn't see it you know it's just VAR it's it's kind of ruining the game in a sense because even when a goal goes in you're afraid to celebrate you know yeah. that's wrong you know yeah it's, yep. it's, it's more for the TV than anything else. The paying customer isn't getting isn't getting their money's worth because a goal goes in and you're you're afraid to celebrate because you know you're afraid it's going to be real low. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I was watching the game on TV, I actually said this has to be offside because you know Norgard was offside, and I think I think um, the centre half Pinnock he was actually slightly offside as well. So there's there's two offsides in that play, but apparently Lee Mason didn't check. The second offside for Norgard and didn't actually draw the lines, which look, it's a bit of a joke because the Premier League meant to be the best league in the world. The officiating is the absolute worst. You know, they've all the money in the world to buy this player and that player, but they don't have the money to pay for um the automated offsides where it actually tells you if the player is offside or not. Yeah. So um that was very, you know, it's very frustrating that sorry, there was neither let the dog out here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it. Um <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's very frustrating that um, we end up drawing the game from basically VAR's mistake. You know, to be honest, Brighton probably deserved the draw because Arsenal weren't great, um, great for the whole game. You know, it, I think a draw was a fair result, but to get to to draw that game from a VAR result, it's very hard to accept because you know when you're going to win the league, whether that's a one 0 win or two 0 win, you're going to play bad. You know, in a few games. We didn't play yeah. great Saturday, and you know if if, if we go on and win one nil, you know people say, "Geez, you know it's America champions," and yeah, it, it, it would have been, you know, it would have been because you know maybe Brentford go on to score, you know, without that VAR mistake. But after they finally got the goal, they kind of just sat back and they were happy enough to take the point. Um, you know, it's been a tough kind of few games, the last three games. You know, we haven't won in three, which is kind of worrying. Yeah. Um, the City game, FA Cup, you know, yeah, you can probably, you can probably forget about that and just take that, you know, just take that on the chin. Um, but the Everton game in particular, you know, we always just seem to get everything when you have a new manager, which is, it's a bit mad. Now, it's, it's a bit mad at this stage. Um, <laughs> so look, we we one point out of Everton and Brentford, it is poor, but then City got the exact same. You know, um, I felt in this particular game, Johnny. I don't know about you, that. The pressure is really starting to kind of get in on the players now. You know, it's it's a little bit concerning because we've still sixteen games to go. You know, what is it going to be like when we've six game, six games to go? Do you know, that's yeah. the only worrying thing I can say about Saturday. Um, we were always always going to have a blip. You know, maybe this is our blip where we don't win for one or two games, and then come tomorrow we win. Um, but that's the most alarming kind of thing for me. And I think Arteta needs to make substitution maybe a little bit quicker and a bit of squad rotation wouldn't be harmful because a lot of that starting eleven has played, you know, the whole season. Yeah, it's what well, you said it's alarming from the game that you went to the three two uh home in over Man United. Yeah. And from the last three games now, we've only scored once in those three mm. games. Um, and I think, really, to, to, as you said, the only kind of positive thing you can take out of those last three games is Leandro Trossard. Yeah. He, he has actually, since when he's come off the bench, he adds a bit to the game, doesn't he? There's a bit mm. of magic, you know, he can yeah. create things and he's direct, which I mm. noticed, you know. And it's like he's, you know, there you, know, there you say, it, he, he, he's like he's played in Arsenal short a lot longer than three yeah. or four weeks wasn't he yeah. like he settled yeah. into the spot into Arteta's are you happy enough with the way he started Arsenal yeah? Yeah. yeah like it's, look I always thought he was a good player you know he's caught free at Anfield so yeah. uh, this year, you know <laughs> yeah. he's clearly a good player Um he, he's just something that he's a little bit different to Martinelli they are similar but I just think Trotter can maybe do something score a goal out of nowhere whereas Martinelli you kind of know what he's going to do. Do you know he's he'll try to beat the defender, you know, on the line and then cut back in to you know cross yeah. or have a shot. Whereas Trossard, you don't know what he's going to kind of do with the ball. It's trickery. Um, yeah, like 
look a bit more experience as well hasn't he like he's yeah, yeah he's, he's a bit more hammer on the ball yeah yeah like yeah. Martin Elliott's played a lot this season he had a good yeah. World Cup you know so he maybe maybe he's a little bit tired um, oh, but you know it's not an excuse because it's, you know a lot of other teams have played um, a City lot of games as well City's yeah. the same you know so yeah. if, if we're going to win the league Johnny we need to I think we need to start making substitutions early and that, you know, like that game in particular, it was one all at, you know, the 70th minute. I had to wait at six, seven minutes to bring Vieira on. Now I know Vieira didn't do unbelievable when he came on, but, you know, I think if he makes two or three changes, now I know you can disrupt the team and, you know, people might say, oh, well, you might lose the game then, but, you know, if you're, if you're at home, you should be going for these games, you know. If you're on oh, the road, yeah. you know, you're away, Fair enough, you might just take the points. Yeah, but, take the points. But when you're at you home, know, you have to win, yeah. Yeah, like City played Villa there on Sunday. They had three defenders and the rest were all attackers. So the alarming thing with that performance, Craig, sorry, with the City game, they came out fighting from the, the off. I think yeah. aside from the allegate, you know, we, we, the, was 115 breaches mm. of financial or financial for play, but they, they, they were a team that came out on a mission, didn't they? You know, yeah. um, they, they, they wanted to win that game. And it's, um, I, I think after that slip up as well from us on Saturday, I think when you play a day ahead of your nearest title chance, it gives them more uh, impetus and incentive to, all right, we know what they've done the day before. Mm. We know what we've to do now, which is, you know, and we're, we're going to be in that position aside mm. from tomorrow night, 12 30 against Villa on Saturday. Uh, yeah, and it's, games. the Leicester game is away as well. And, but Emery will have a point to prove, and Leicester are coming into a bit of form. They won four on the spores. So, those mm. four games in February, I which looked like 12 points on paper, they've really turned out to be tricky games now, haven't they? Yeah, maybe yeah. these are games the players probably thought maybe a bit naively we, we go into the, these games and we'll win them. You know, and maybe mm. that maybe this isn't I. You know, maybe this is a a wake up call. You're not going to walk this till the May. You well, have to, for, for, you know. Yeah, where it's a wake up call, I don't know. Like you know, like as I mentioned, Brentford, Everton, and Newcastle. We played them in the last kind of five six weeks. They're, they're very similar teams where they'll, you know, put a bank of five there, pack the midfield. So, you know, the kind of you know your macho kind of English teams that are going to sit back and say, right, you know, well, you, got off, you know, whereas the rest of the league, you know, the likes of Villa, you know, Leicester, etc., they, they want to play football. So I, yeah. I don't necessarily think that they're, you know, going to sit back and just let us attack. No, them. but yeah. Maybe they will, you know, maybe like a lot of teams are going to have to start respecting Arsenal more because we are a good team. And yeah. if they do open up, we are going to, you know, we are going to beat them. It's going to be, so, yeah. yeah. You know, there's 16 games left to go, and a lot of teams are going to use this Brentford everything games kind of as a blueprint, you know, to kind of how to play Arsenal because yeah. we, have, we, have, we failed to break them down. Um, you know, this game in particular, we really, really missed Jesus. You know, him kind of dropping deep, linking the play, getting one twos, disrupting the back four. Yeah, the, you know, yeah, yeah, he's unpredictable, you know, whereas Eddie. You sort of know what you're going to get. You know? His head kind of goes down, I notice, the last two games when he's being frustrated. He can kind of give up, can't he? You know, like when yeah. it's that, and he, and to, be fair, to be fair, he's not getting the balls into him. Like he's, he's being swamped by mm. two players all the time. He was at Sack, has been Mart Man Mark by two, Mark Nelly nearly the same. Teams have kind of maybe worked his old bit, which we might have to. Yeah, hopefully, yes. You know, you hit the name of the head, Johnny. You know, I think I think teams have maybe worked this out a little bit, um, and that that's up to Arteta and the players now to, yeah. you know, try and create different ways of scoring because, <clears throat> you know, I know we we were one 0 up on Saturday and he's conceded, but generally when we go one or two 0 up, you know, we we are kind of we, we normally are comfortable. Yeah. We are solid enough, you know. Um, again, you know, I, I just I just think it maybe if I touch it. Maybe Saturday's not the game to change it. But, you know, even like Sevilla or Leicester the week after, you know, play three in midfield, play Perry at the base of midfield, and maybe play, you know, a Vieira or an Odegaard beside him and drop Shaka. You know, like, Xhaka's Jacques Jacques been unbelievable this season. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, yeah. Don't, you don't have to play Xhaka in every game. Um, do you know? So I, I just think that 
maybe changing up a little bit, one or two players that will come in, you know. Ben White has been unbelievable again this season. I kind of think Ben White's jacket, um, the last come, kind of two or three games have struggled. Um, so I think maybe changing them could be good. You know, did you expect to win Saturday, Johnny? Like, what do you think of it? The last few games, I've said that the Everton game was going to be either a draw or a scrappy 1-0. And I knew Brentford, we won 3 nil away in September against them, but I knew the way they've been playing, like they've been unbeaten since the Premier League restart, since the World Cup. Uh, they're eight in the Premier League with 34 points, and I'm um, And they've only lost four as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think, like, for their second season, they're playing as well as they did in their fourth season, and this second yeah. season doesn't seem to have affected them like other teams oh. but I think Brentford deserve respect now I think they're going to be a mainstay in the Premier League you know yeah. like Thomas Frank he brings a lot of, He's they've captured good young Danish players that no one ever heard of and they've fitted quite well in the mm-hmm. Premier League and uh, to be honest I expected probably a draw <clears throat> if I was being honest I, I predicted that last week as well it was either going to be uh, 2-1 we were saying like last year when we bet them at home but that was that was a tough game as well and it was either going to be 2-1 I said or a draw and it didn't really surprise because when they've got Embuemo and Tony mm. like they they cause any yeah. like they've done I think Tony's scored 14 or 15 goals so that's not why yeah. you know and he's he's, he's a frustrating striker he'll upset defenders like Gabriel and Saliba, you know, he's got mm. that thing about him, you know. Yeah, he's, and, not be, he's not going to be pushed over, you know. He, no. I think he was kind of right up for this game because obviously, you know, the whole... He's like a Jesus. He's an end product and he can annoy. And as yeah, said, yeah. that's who we miss, you that's know. What I'm saying. Like, I think uh, any team that can have him, you know, um, I, I wouldn't mind him in Arsenal at all. I think he'd be a good option to have. Yeah. Uh, I'd love him, yeah. You know, there's an argument maybe. I know I guess he's been great this year and Eamon loves him, you know, but uh, in Ketty and Jesus, they are similar in ways. So I think, you know, to have a different kind of striker who can kind of, you know, do it all, headers, score yeah. goals, you know. And goal defenders. as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah he's, yeah. I'm talking yeah. argument for the summer to get another striker in, but uh, like you said, you mentioned a couple of times, you have Balogun coming back maybe. Yeah, you know, top scoring for League One, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll yeah. very well, so. I was just looking at their stats reams actually last night in the paper here. Um, they scored thirty and he scored half them. Fifty, you know, like yeah. it's incredible, isn't it? Like, and Crazy. like if he can transform that form into the Premier League, which I'm sure he can if he gets mm. a run of games. Like, there's a there's a signing in itself, you know. Yeah, amazing yeah. what well, a lone move can do, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like we're going to have Champions League next year, anyways, unless we. Yeah. He- Dramatically fall off. But, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not saying that's, that's, that's the thing with Arsenal, Johnny. You just never know. Yeah. You know, can... like even with, even with, even though we're what three points clear now at the moment, I just hope you know we we'll get into the tomorrow's game like in a, in a few minutes. But regardless of what happens tomorrow, I just hope we don't kind of drop the heads now and you know City go on and win it by 10, 15 points. Yeah. Because we we've been here many times before, and I know. It's different teams, and maybe it was the Wenger years and all that sort of crack. But I just hope. Look, I love it <laughs> if we win the league. I'd absolutely love it. You know, it would be over the moon. But I hope we push City to the end. It will be tough to win the league or even push City to the end. But you know, at where we are, it'd be crazy to kind of see us finish ten, fifteen points behind them. You know, I think even Arteta says we're ahead of the project. Mm. But, um. Is you you know and, and normally at, uh, unfortunately the World Cup break had to come in December because normally at this stage you're nearly about what 24, 25 games in. Yeah, so we're still, yeah. we're still looking at seventeen still to play, which is unfortunate. You know, it, it it is a big chunk of the season. But the only thing in that is we're out of two cups, and it's one less headache to worry about. You know, and the Europa yeah. League still another month away. So we've mm-hmm. got between now and next, this probably this time next month. Actually, I think I think we play either the seventh or the fourteenth of March. I think it's the fourth mm-hmm. day. So we still have yeah. like the guts of what <coughs> four games, thirty thirty five, including tomorrow night, up to the Fulham game to get you know to still stay ahead of the City. But yeah. 
the I'll get your sorry, uh, Craig. I get your man of the match from uh, Saturday. Who stood out for you in for for the years? Um, man of the match. Yeah, it's, it's coming to scrap <laughs> that one. Um, I'm trying to think now who maybe had a decent game. Possibly, I'd say Party. Party did very well. Yeah, he did. You know, he, did. He, he played Sorry, very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's kind of one that stood out, and he look, he's he's a t- t- kind of thing that makes our team tick. So you know, he, he's definitely stood out for me. Yeah. Yeah, he did actually. Yeah, it's, he he drags the midfield by the scruff of, of the neck. All right. Uh, I probably, to be honest, the, the impact Trossard had aside from his goal, I probably give it to yeah. him. Yeah. You know, because he, he he I think maybe he should be starting maybe tomorrow yeah. night. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think since the Man City game, maybe stand up to, saying this is a quality sign because it looks like he always was playing for us. You know. Yeah. And, Brighton's loss is definitely our gain, I think, you know, so I'd give it to Trossard myself. That draw exactly. on Saturday leaves his top going into tomorrow's night's match against City. <clears throat> uh, 21 played, uh, 16 wins, 3 draws, 2 losses, uh, 46 scored, 18 conceded, 51 points. Uh, City, uh, 22 played, which is most important because that game in hand could mean everything. Um, 15 wins, 3 draws, 4 defeats, uh, they scored 56, conceded 22 and 48. Um, uh, this is a big one now, tomorrow night now. Uh, originally scheduled for October, um, but um, it's on Amazon Prime. I think Premier Sports has it here. Uh, 7.30 kickoff. Um, they call the relegation games like this a six-pointer. This is a championship six-pointer, I think, by, by yeah. far. Um it's hard to know what city will turn up because they haven't been they've been good this season but they can they've been ropey as well you know they've mm. not one of their most fluent seasons you could say um but this game would have been ideal for Jesus I think and he's going to be a last for this one I think in my opinion um how do you see it going Craig a massive one this isn't it yeah it's it's massive um you know if you asked me this two weeks ago before the Brentman Everton game I would have said we're going to win. <laughs> it's going to be a hard game. Um, you know, City are going to come to the Emirates and shut us up, you know, and say, like, you know, we're still the boss. Um, yeah. And obviously, Arteta has that kind of, you know, the history with City there. Um, look, it's, 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 it's so hard to call to be honest with you. Um, team wise, I think he's going to go with the same team as he at that played against Brentford. I think he will. I just think. Is tried and trusted. Um, although I would argue that I'd like to try to start off with Martinelli. Um, I just think in a game this big, he probably goes with Martinelli. He knows Martinelli. You know, he trusts Martinelli. Martinelli knows the game plan probably more so than Trossard. So I think if it was to go be going wrong, he might you know change that during the game. Um, so I think we're gonna have the same starting lineup as against Brent, against Brentford City. You know, they'll probably go four three three. Um, although they did play three at the back. On Sunday, but I think that was maybe mind games. You know, I think Haaland's going to be fit. Uh, I think him coming off a half time was just mind games. You know, I think uh, they were training up at that point, so I don't yeah. think he was injured at all. Um, you know, it, it's such a tough game. You know, both teams are going to want possession, um, so that's interesting to see. You know, will City sit back and let us have the ball, and maybe you know take a, you know. They might look at the Newcastle game and say, Do you know what, we're going to sit back and let Arsenal attack us, and then they might try count, try counter us. Do you know, then do Arsenal sit off and let City have the ball and then counter because you know, I think we're decent enough at counter. You know, I, I know this year we kind of haven't really sat back and let a team play, whereas you know, where we were count, counter attacking this year, but I think we're well capable of doing that with Martinelli, Saka, you know, and Odegaard in the team, but um, I, I honestly can't call it, Johnny, you know. If you were to kind of push me for a score line or something like that, I, 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 I think it's going to be a draw. I think maybe a two all or something like that because I'd love to sit here and say Arsenal are going to win. I just I just think City are going to come to prove a point. You know, we might have a few tired legs after the game against Brentford on Saturday. You know, City had a kind of stroll in the park on Sunday against uh, Villa. You know, they were training up at half time, so I don't think they're going to be, you know, too overly tired. Um, the rest of one or two players, you know, Nate, Nate and Aki will probably come back in left back against uh, Saka. 
And he, he, in fairness to Aki, he done well against Saka uh, in the FA Cup. So, um, be interesting to see how that goes. Um, like it, it wouldn't surprise me if Arsenal did win either because you know we have a point to prove. You know we're, we should be fired up for this. If you can't get fired up for a game like this, you may as well forget about it. You know, um, regardless of the result, I just hope you know it doesn't end up being like three or four nil City. You know, I just hope that we're in it. You know, yeah. When, yeah. You know, there's a goal in it or something, or it's a draw. But you know, there's been a lot of times over the past few years where I thought. You know, you know, we're we're going to turn this big team over today, and we end up getting popped two or three nails. You know, which is look, we're, we're a different team to that. Um, it's really important mindset uh, was for the rest of the season what happens in this result because I think if we draw, you know, Man United fans will be celebrating. You know, they'll be celebrating a draw because they're not out of night. Yeah, you know, Man United fans still think they're in this. Whether I think they're in it or not. I'm not so sure, you know, I don't think they're as good as Man City or Arsenal, but they've, you know, the last kind of five or six games they've had have been very friendly, you know, the, the fixtures have been very kind of friendly to them. And um, I think they play Liverpool next week or the week after as well. So we'll see how they get on then. Um, I, I don't think, I don't, I, don't, I don't think Man United are in it, but look, you never know in this league, there's a lot of games to go. Um, I, th- I think if we draw this game, you know, it's kind of as you were. Um, but I think I think if we were to win the game, you know, it give us so much momentum for the rest of the season. You know, it give us air players and the fans believe that you know we're we're the best team in the league, you know, and we can do this. So it's very very important, obviously, because if City beat us, they got top of the league. But I think for air belief and uh, momentum wise to kind of change the screw because the last three or four games haven't been great. If we win tomorrow, you know, I'd be very confident going to going to Villa Park on Saturday, unless the week after I'm winning them games, you know. Um, but if he, you know, if we, if we lost the games, you know, it's kind of it makes that game against Saturday Villa Park uh, even more tough. How do you see it going yourself? Uh, the the FA Cup game was really tight, and it gave me a bit of optimism that we didn't roll over at the Etihad, had, um, and we were well in it up until that goal, you know, um, mm. and that was you know that was even down down a few of the key players, and we played well that night. Um, but I think the Premier League is a different um, it's a different animal, isn't it? Yeah. Like City live for the Premier League, really, don't they? You know, mm. it's what Guardiola says. Uh, they're chasing the Champions League, which they probably are. They're, they're dying to get their hands on that. But mm. I think with our home form not be, being beaten all season, we'll stand to us tomorrow night. Um, I think it's going to be a cracking atmosphere at the Emirates. The 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 new stadium art on the outside looks mm. from what Martin put up. I'm dying to go over to see it, you know. Looks um, amazing, yeah. Especially the hybrid print. It looks yeah. like you're actually walking up into yeah. high, doesn't it? Mm. It's really well done. Mm. Um, but uh, it probably, <clears throat> it's it's a tough one to call, as you said. It's very hard to get a prediction on this. It could, even, could, it could be a scrappy 2-1-0 or 2-1 to us, or it could be a mall and mm. The first yeah. goal will be decisive, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think if we get the first goal, the crowd will be behind us and it will quieten them down. But yeah, I think the one player everyone's looking at, Haaland for City, I think the one player that goes about his business quite quietly and he's performed the last few weeks is Riyad Mahrez. Yeah. I think him and Rodri are I the agree. two players. Yeah. He, he seems to go under the radar, Mahrez, and he's probably... As good, if not maybe even a bit better than Haaland, because he a little, really, a little bit worrying Johnny him playing against Zinchenko. Now I know Zinchenko, but he yeah. knows him. You know, yeah. I, might, I might know what he's, he's going to do, but he's he's not going to go past. He's just very, he, he, you know, he will pretend to shoot and he'll you know yeah. put it back and he he is a worry. Yeah, he's a very good player. I I thought when he was with Leicester now. He stood out for me that year they won it, and maybe even the season before that when they were. I went to see them. We bat him two one. And it looked like they were going down under Pearson. It was mm. around every four or five years ago. And then they went on this run out of nowhere and set up. But that night, I think he might have been scored. And I said, Jesus, there's a player here in him. Yeah. You know, he was three, and he stood out when, he, when you're playing with the team. Is You know, maybe Vardy was an exception that night as mm. well. But he's really come on the last two or three years under Guardiola. And yeah. I think tomorrow night, he is one to watch. But uh, mm-hmm. to be honest, all eleven city players, but mainly him and Haaland and Rodri. Rodri, yeah. he can score like party out of nowhere crackers. Yeah. You know, 
Um, I look forward to the game, you know, but it's just. I think if you get yeah. it at the back, uh, Craig City, they, they've been leaky, haven't they? they there yeah, is a mistake that, or two in no. them. Yeah, yeah, they definitely can be got at. Um, yeah. Especially, you know. Where do you see, actually, do you mind me asking, where do you see their weaknesses tomorrow night, you know, where Ursa can exploit? Yeah, City's weaknesses, maybe. Um, I definitely, I, I think Kyle Walker and Nathan Aki, you know, like. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. They're good players, but, you know, I think Saka can def- definitely beat Nathan Aki, you know. He, he's sent a half by trade, you know. He's a soft gap left back, you know. Um, he, he's done it right this, year, this season, but... Um, I, th- I think Saka definitely can get the beating of him. You know, we need Saka to have a big game. Uh, Kyle Walker as well. He's probably going to go up against Martinelli. Kyle Walker's a good player, but, you know, he's 32 now, I think. Nearly 33. So, he's pushing on. Um, I-, I think Kyle Walker will start over the young lad, R- Rico Lewis. Um, yeah, I think so. He yeah. was a good player, but, um, you know, I think it's going to be... Air wingers are so important in their game. So, I think that's where we win the game. So, I think if we're gonna, if we're Arsenal going to win the, win the game... They need to exploit the fullbacks of City, um, especially with Walker and Nathan Aki. You know, one of them will come into midfield like Zinchenko does. So, you know, if we overturn the ball, it's about getting the ball quickly out to Saka and Martinelli. Um, you know, we probably haven't touched on them yet. We need Martin Odegaard to have a big game tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah, you know, the last few games he's been pretty quiet, yeah. hasn't he? He's been quiet enough the last few games. I think... I think you could Arsenal, pressure him... High up, which I've noticed everything done is and Brentford, he can kind of go really quiet in the game, mm. can't he? he kind of knocks him well, off. They, they, they nullify the space there. I think there will be space tomorrow against City because I don't think City are going to be as defensive as Newcastle, Everton, you know, uh, Brentford. So, yeah, yeah expansive. Um, yeah. Look, it should be a great game, you know. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a three all, four all, you know. I think there will be goals <laughs> in the game. Um, I hope it's not a three or four for all. I hope <laughs> Arsenal don't smash them. Um, you know, like it, it, again, it wouldn't surprise me if we come back tomorrow. I mean, you know, one two or three nil. But then it wouldn't surprise me if City one two or three nil, or if it does end up a draw. It, it just, I actually, I, I cannot call it. You know, if, if it was a betting man, I'd go two all. But me, me heart is saying we're going to beat them two one. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I do think this on this occasion we will beat them at home. You know, I, I think our Ted will have a plan. You know, and he's, I think Saturday's draw against Brentford might even be, if we'd won against Brentford, I think there'd be even more of a fire. You know, because yeah. the last two games, I think he'll say, look, we can't afford to do this anymore. Or, you know, you know yourself. You give City a bit of a head start; they just run away with it. Then I don't know what City's fixtures are for the next kind of two or three games. Uh, it's Forest and Bournemouth after, and they're both away. Yeah, uh, Forest. You know, Forest won't be easy. Um, no, because they've signed good players as well. Actually, yeah, yeah. and Bournemouth, Bournemouth Steve. You know, realistically, they should be beating Bournemouth City. So yeah, it's and then it's Newcastle Palace and West Ham before the international break. Then. Newcastle yeah. Palace West Ham, they're not easy. Palace, Newcastle's at home, which they drew three all at St James's, which which surprised yeah. me earlier on. But the way Newcastle West Ham are at home or away? Uh, it's at home. So probably, yeah, you probably expect. Uh, I'd probably, I wouldn't go, would be surprised with a draw at home at Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Because Newcastle have only lost once this season, which is better than anyone now. I think I think Newcastle are kind of trying to fall away a little bit now. Yeah, the, the, um, the squad size is starting to show, yeah. isn't it? They're going through a blip like ourselves, you know, so they, they could come back. Um, <coughs> you know, like, I'm not going to lie to you, Johnny, I'm a little bit concerned about Man United. Yeah, I'm just looking. Uh, I'm concerned about Rashford's form. He's really come on a hot streak. Um, it's Leicester at home on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, Brantford at home, which... We found out that could possibly be a draw, and then it's Liverpool away, which I probably got fancy Liverpool and that being honest. And yeah, then it's really aren't, aren't easy for them. It's not, it's hard to call now because they've Southampton then, which they're falling away. I think Jesse Marsh, I think, is going to get appointed there, mm. which is bad. And Brighton away, which you could, I think Brighton could turn them there as well. Mm. 
Um, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to go from now to the end of the season, there's going to be a lot of uh, twists and turns. You yeah. know, I don't think there's going to be any formality of winning. We're going to win that. <laughs> I thought we were going to win against Everton at Brentford there. Yeah. And you know, it would, what looked easy, it looked an easy month is starting to turn out. There's no easy game in the Premier League, you know. No. And that's the beauty and excitement of it. Yeah. Anyone can beat anyone. It's just a pity that VAR, their VAR and officials that aren't good that's, enough. I think it still should go back to the ref and the linesman. Yeah. That's what made, yeah. That's what made it yeah. exciting. You yeah. know, like this being technically correct and, you know, like it's, the sport isn't, sport is for errors and, you know, that's what makes the game, you know, and yeah. like, I think from next season on the fans will actually be able to see it. I don't, think ever, I don't think they're ever going to get rid of uh they are because they put too much money into it you know it's just if they got the um god made it off so it's that'd be a lot better because it just actually the offsides it. yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't worry mean. about the silly things he's yeah and there and he was here and um and to be honest for the referees in what's it stockley park i think it's there's a lot to take in in a short space of time yeah you know because they're looking at this angle and then that angle and you know and it has to be done within a certain time because the play you know and I don't well, know I think what, what the most another frustrating thing from Saturday game against Brentford was is that like there was only five minutes out of done I'd say there easily could have been double that because in the World Cup was for, 11 there were stops for VAR there were yeah. stops for injuries the, towards the end of the game Tony was you know play acting to come out um, and say he made a mistake was even more so, Craig, isn't it? It's I even know, yeah, yeah. you know, like just do your job on that. It's embarrassing. Yeah, embarrassing for the Premier League. it's embarrassing for the Premier League ref that was actually checking mm. this. It's embarrassing, you know. But yeah. uh, that's only go on. You know, hopefully we, we, it doesn't go against us in tomorrow night or any other match because it, it can it can prove decisive, you know, and to not to your gain, which is sadly happened on Saturday, yeah. but. Uh, you're going for two one, then are you tomorrow night, uh, Craig? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go. I go two one. I have to go for Arsenal. If it is two one, there's a point in the concealer for you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we plenty of points to win tomorrow, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, we're tomorrow on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's a massive game. Seven thirty kickoff, which is a bit odd time, but I think that's what it was originally scheduled for yeah. when it was uh, due for October. Uh, October was yeah. Um. At that time, it should have been played in October when we were on a roll of form. we have beaten mm. Spurs, Liverpool, Leeds, and then it would have came to that one. So, yeah, yeah. you never know what way it would have turned out. Though. But um, look, either it's a big game. I think all the players will know it on both sides. It should be a cracking game, yeah, and it's not exactly. closer in terms of we haven't been we haven't had a fixture against them like this where we are in the table. It's always when we're being well away from them. So yeah. that even adds to it as well. Um, yeah, uh, that's Premier Sports one uh, in the Republic of Ireland. Um, we played a midweek in eight in the April uh, return fixture, which is at the Etihad. So that's unfortunate again. It's in midweek. It's hard for us living over here to get a bit of time out, but you never know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> never, that, that's about six games to go then, so <laughs> you never know. Um, anything Arsenal related, um, Craig, or anything football related? You've. Um... No, no, just look forward to the game tomorrow. So hopefully we can we can put another, another run together because you know we've lost away a little bit the last two or three games and you know if we if we were to lose tomorrow we'd be very doom and gloom gloomy around the club again. You know, um, we deserve a break because we've suffered enough over the last few years. So yeah, we do. Yeah. I, I think this season we do deserve. I think opposition fans have said it. I, I've been few United and Liverpool yeah. mates have said. If you don't win it this year, if you like the year of the lesser, yeah, you might get another sniff, you know. But I think with the project being built, being honest, Craig, I think we're a bit ahead of it at the moment. But there's a there's an eleven there they can challenge now, season on season, all going well with injuries and all that aside. You know, I think there is a team being built for a potential Champions League run and a title. Yeah. So um, it's exciting times ahead, honey. Uh, and with the stadium art as well, I'm looking forward to go visiting the Emirates as well. It looks absolutely class. Um, so that's uh, Man City tomorrow night, and we'll be doing a, another show 
Uh, myself, Mark, Naaman and John will be back Thursday uh, to review, hopefully, a uh, good result tomorrow night and to preview our fixture on Saturday against Aston Villa, which is a 12.30 kickoff on um, PT Sports. Um, we'll try to get this show up with the show on uh, Thursday, um, if not earlier. Um, we might probably pl- plug our way to Martin to get it up tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully it's a short one. Yeah, and it's short enough, it's yeah. Odd minute mark, so yeah, it's not much editing to do either, you know. So, uh, Martin, if you're listening, get off the bottle of vino <laughs> and uh, or the Merlot, certainly. I know I was in the UK tonight, so if you're listening, get off it and get this edited quickly for me and Craig. <laughs> um, and, and if, if, Ozzy, if Ozzy and Martin are listening, <laughs> I hope to the great Valentine's Day, lads. We missed you on the show. <laughs> and to Eamon, so frustrating <laughs> that you're not on it tonight. That's for you, Eamon. Uh, <laughs> happy Valentine's to everyone. Um, uh, I'd just like to dedicate um, tonight's show um to my uncle, um, Sean Giles, who sadly um, passed away uh, due to cancer yeah. uh, yesterday morning um, uh, at the young age of 64. Um, he passed away in the Matter Hospital here in Dublin. Uh, so I'd like to thank all the nurses and doctors that helped him over the last uh, year and a half there. He fought a good fight and uh, he'll be fondly remembered, that's for sure. Um, I'd like, um, I've dedicated this show and uh, 12 February uh, donations, uh, if, if if people can, listening or viewing this, uh, to cancer.ie, the Irish Cancer Society, and to pieta.ie, who also look after that. Um, two very worthwhile causes. I think everyone knows someone in their life that has passed away due to this horrible disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and... It's quite, you know, I thought I dedicate this show and to the rest of the month to Sean, uh, who was a fair great play on, fair play. It's not easy to say that, and I'm, I'm sure on behalf of all the lads from the podcast, we uh, send a condolences to you uh, and the family, and especially to your brother Mark, who I also know. Yeah, I think um, to uh, pass my condolences on to um, his wife Margaret, his uh, son Ryan. And to our extended Giles family as well, and to the Lynches as well, um, on Margaret's side. Um, it's sad. Um, and um, any donations to uh, cancer.ie and to PA would be uh, well appreciated because um, they do amazing work uh, for families going through uh, such really a, a horrific time, you know. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on anyone's family, you know. And, but what I witnessed over the last few weeks and days is nothing short uh, foot sport and everything else really to insignificance. But I thought I'd dedicate the tonight show and Thursday show, which will be going out this week as well, to um Sean Giles. Um well said, thank, well said. Cheers, thanks, Craig. Um just shocking really. Um I'd just like to thank Craig. Thanks for coming on tonight, Craig. Um, Anytime, was, I was here. Um, it was a nice romantic show, <laughs> <laughs> if anything. <laughs> uh, lads, to the, the other lads that are the weekly guests, you've a lot to live up to after tonight. <laughs> Nothing like a one on one. You can catch our show Spotify um, and the Dublin Arsenal YouTube channel as well. Um, so until Thursday night show, a special one this week covering the City game and the Villa game. Um, it's goodbye from me and Craig, and uh, thanks for viewing and listening. Thanks, Good. Good. Come on, you gunners. Good.